Let's boot up the Geiger counter and go look for some radioactive minerals in a uranium deposit. We're in the birthed plutonic suite. All of this rock has been over a very wide area metamorphosed. We're going that way. Mm. Yeah, let's check it out. I've come across a mine and I'll show you the rock that prompted me to get a count. First of all, let's establish a baseline count for radiation in the area. And we're not gonna wait a full minute. We're just gonna go by total. So it'll register per per count of ionizing radiation. When one of those ionizing particles comes in contact with the tube, it converts it to an electrical impulse. A typical uh, count per minute baseline is about 20, 20 per minute. Okay, this is what I saw. This rock right here, do you see how uh, uniquely colored it is? How dark and it just looks ominous. I'm most accustomed to granites in which we have, wow, Potassium 40, let's get a count per minute actually. Where we get uh, potassium 40 is radioactive, but to a small degree. In granite, even a granite countertop will produce a high radiation count. But this is not granite. Uh, alanite is also another cause in granite. Goodness gracious, this is amazing. Already at 430, and it hasn't even been a full minute. Alanite contains thorium, 477 counts. More concentrated down there. I'm not concerned about my safety. I'm more concerned about identifying the mineral. Uh, but you don't want to put your snacks down in a place like this. Oh, we got some tourmaline too. Tourmaline here as well. Mm, yeah, well, maybe. I was growing accustomed to seeing tourmaline form with regularity in these metamorphic pegmatites, but this is a radioactive mineral deposit. So it makes me think that this could be uraninite. Uraninite is an isometric crystal system uh, mineral, and it forms in short, stubby, blocky crystals roughly cubic shape. So it would make sense because tourmaline forms in trigonal, prismatic, and elongated crystals. These are not elongated. I need to collect a sample and bring it back for closer observation and isolated analysis of the radioactivity. But if you have any insight about what you think this is, feel free to share it in the comments because I am so curious. Autonite is gonna be more green, same with torbonite, or maybe uranophane. So let's, let's go explore all of this stuff and see if we can find some distinguished crystal forms and just keep this on because, yeah, I really want to figure out what, what mineral we're working with here. I mean, we got the, we got green going on, like yellowy green. Even this red is, uh, makes me think radioactive. Uh, in granite, it has been. What's likely doing this is alanite and uh, most likely thorium. Let's go somewhere else for comparison. Well, we're back up to 40, so maybe like 35, 40 is typical for a granite. Add that one to your repertoire. It looks just like biotite, but this is prismatic. Biotite is tabby. All right, I found the culprit. Uh, we, it is definitely the yellow mineral. And unfortunately, I don't have any, none of it has defined enough crystal crystals to identify. It's just a dust. I'm pretty positive it's a uranium ore. Let's get the count per minute. Yeah, right up in that. And it looks like that's what they're mining here. You can see all of the faces where they carved into the rock were really enriched in yellow. This, I'm pretty sure it's uranium ore. Right, we'll find out. It still hasn't even been a minute yet. One thousand seventy five counts per minute. I'm going to grab a respirator.
pretty sure I see like a source of it. It's uh, in a mineral. We could see these dendritic crystals forming, unless it's a carbonate that's uh, dissolving from up the hill and then precipitating as stalactites, incorporating the uranium. I mean, I guess it's uranium uh, into it. So <laughs> radioactive stalactites. Check out Amundo. Wow, I've never seen wild strawberries. At least not in the mountains. I think I'm gonna cut it short. I am a little disoriented. I have a migraine. And my nose won't stop bleeding. JK, I don't have any symptoms or feel funny. Let's find out what the mineral is though. So. Going from yellow minerals. It's not embligonite. The closest matches are it's not like grandite. What grandite is is zinc arsenate. This was really lacking in any form. This is the page that I feel like our culprit is on. So what uraninite is, uraninite is black. It is a uranium oxide, I believe. Uh, it forms isometric crystals, so you can see a cubic shape here. That's the uraninite there. The gummite, though, is a secondary, an alteration product of this. So uh, it's an, I believe, an oxide of uranium. The index doesn't list that gummite uh, is produced in Colorado, though it does mention carnitite in Colorado. It says southwestern Colorado. We're not in southwestern Colorado, but still, I mean, if it's Colorado, then it could be carnitite. We're lacking crystal form, though. Uh, and that's it for the yellow minerals. Uh, autonite, let's go to a picture. Autonite is one of my favorite minerals ever. But I think we passed it. Yeah, here. It's so freaking beautiful. Bladed. I really don't think it's autonite. We will find out though. I will find out. They could be uraninite crystals. Those black ones that were very short little... Into the moonlight. I brought the sample back home. Most likely candidates are uranophane or gummite, and we can tell the difference between the two because uranophane will fluoresce. This website I highly recommend uh, for uh, determining mineral species by way of fluorescence and color emission of the spectra. Uh, you can see here that it peaks at 513 nanometer wavelength, and right here we can see 513 would be about right in here. It does tell us that it is green though uh, as well. So that's what we're gonna be looking for. I'm gonna take this into a completely dark room and we're gonna see if we can get any fluorescence with a short or long wave ultraviolet lamp. All right, first up, we're gonna go with a long wave. I'm not noticing any activity on this end where it's the yellow is most concentrated. Mm. with the long wave. Let's try the short wave visible light, short wave ultraviolet. One thing that's very interesting about this is there is a lot of yellow concentrated to the left side, and we'll see that when we turn the lights on in a second, but I also want to flip to the back where I didn't notice any yellow. So let's see what's going on there. So yellow on this side and then the back. So we have this 
lighter colored mineral. Final determination, uranophane. If it were gummite, we would not get any fluorescence. If it were autonite, it would be glowing like a full moon from 15 meters away. But if you have any other suggestions, drop it in the comment and back up why you think it is. This is not about being right. This is about scientifically approaching mineral identification. I think it would be dope to go back with a high power shortwave ultraviolet lamp and light up that entire wall. If you want me to invest in a high power shortwave ultraviolet, Comment below, upvote it 20 times, and I'll make the video.